My first 3D printer had a 200 by 200 millimeter build plate. By today's standards, that is a pretty small build plate, but back in 2014, a lot of 3D printer manufacturers were using some form of the Mendel PCB bed heater. Since my original plans for 3D printing was to make case mods, I was very excited for the day that we would be able to print bigger. Well, it would take a couple of years for that to happen, but in 2016, Creality released the original CR10, which had a big leap in build volume. Since then, we have gone much, much bigger, but many of these 3D printers have had their fair share of issues. With the recent releases from Elegoo and Creality, there has once again been a lot of talk about these new massive printers. So in today's video, we're going to talk about these original issues, how some of them have been addressed, as well as a few other things to consider if you are looking at these new large form factor printers. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. The majority of what we are talking about in this video is specifically large format i3 printers because that's primarily what's out there and what is available, especially when we're talking about the more budget hobbyist 3D printers. There are much better options out there for printing big like the Modix printers, but they are going to run you 5 to 10 times as much. Let's start on a positive note with cost. Using the new Elegoo Neptune 3 Max as an example, for under $500, you are getting a printer with a build volume of 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters, which is quite a bargain. If you're making things like props or just large models that can't be broken down and then assembled afterwards, it's hard to argue with the value. When you boil it down, I would say that props, cosplay makers, and again, those real specific big models are who these large printers are really targeted for. I've been a firm believer for years that batch 3D printing increases your chances of failure and that only scales the larger that you go. Luckily, both Octoprint and Clipper have plugins now that will allow you to remove failing parts from the G-code mid-print, but unnecessarily putting all of your eggs in one basket is never smart. If the goal is batch printing, you're typically better off getting a couple of small printers that you can run at the same time. Moving on to the beds for these printers. Most of the i3 style printers are using a very thin PCB bed heater with maybe a thin piece of aluminum attached to them. It's not uncommon for them to come warped from the factory, and if not, it's almost inevitable that after enough heat and cool cycles, you will begin to develop high and low points on your bed. This made getting a good first layer near impossible, and one of the early solutions was to just get a big pane of glass and slap it onto your bed, which did work to an extent, but it also added a lot of unnecessary weight to your y-axis. The good news is that auto bed leveling has come a long ways since the early days. Both the sensors and probes are more reliable and the firmware has evolved making it really easy to create a mesh from your bed or even grab a mesh before the start of every print. This will allow you to print much more reliably even on the warped surfaces and is fine for a lot of applications but can become an issue depending on how dimensionally accurate and how tight the tolerances are on the part that you're trying to print. A warped plate is still a warped plate and even if your z-axis is able to compensate for it, that is still going to make its way into your part. Once again, thanks to firmware evolving, we now have things like mesh fade, which will lessen the correction as the part prints to minimize this. With the early generation of large format Creality printers, they were using their 300 by 300 millimeter bed heater on their 400 by 400 and 500 by 500 millimeter beds. This meant that you would need to have the bed heat up to temp and sit there for a while to try to transfer some of that heat to the outer portions of the bed, but it was never even and it would often lead to curling and warping, especially if you were trying to take advantage of that big build plate. On top of that, a lot of the early printers were running off of 12 volts, which meant that it took a really long time to heat up those beds. As far as I know, all of these new units are running off of either 24 volts or AC, which is a good thing, but it's still something that I would want to verify to save yourself some frustration and having to go through the process of upgrading the bed later on. Big build volume means big weight being pushed back and forth, especially if you are taking advantage of all of that build volume. 
Many of the early Y-axis stepper motors on these large printers would skip steps, especially as that print got heavier and heavier, just from the weight of it whipping back and forth as that motor was changing directions. I'm actually pretty surprised that after all these years, closed loop steppers haven't become more of a thing, especially on the Y-axis for these large printers to help with recovering if they were to lose a step. Next is print times. 3D printers have gotten better over the years and in turn they are able to print quicker than they were before, but for large prints you're still looking at a minimum of multiple days of printing. I remember a few years ago at work they were printing a large castle and it took two weeks to complete the entire print. Thankfully larger nozzles are readily available and with things like the CHT nozzles we can also increase flow, but it's something that you'll have to consider. Personally I feel like these large printers should be shipping stock with a 0.6mm nozzle. Tom showed the details that are able to be reached using the Arachne engine with a 0.6mm nozzle, and at least if you go that route you'll be shaving off a significant amount of that time. Filament runout sensors and power loss recovery are nothing new, but they have definitely become much more common. If you're running a multi-day print, there is nothing worse than having the filament run out somewhere mid-print and coming in to see your printer air printing, or discovering that the cable got bumped or there was a, a brown out in the building and the power kicked off and you have to completely start over the big print you've been running. That being said, it is still not available on every single 3D printer, and a lot of manufacturers have slightly different implementations of how they work. I've had a printer in the past that ran out of filament, did what it was supposed to do, which was pause and go over to the corner, but as part of their process, process on that printer, it cut off the bed's heater. I was using a PEI bed and when the bed temperature drops below a certain temperature with PEI, it releases the part. So it paused it, but by the time I was able to do anything about it, the part was already off the bed and I had to start the entire print over. I've also experienced the continuation of power loss recovery and filament runout, where there has been pretty obvious imperfections or defects in the finished print. In most cases, this is still better than losing the part altogether, but I highly recommend on any large form factor printer testing out the power loss recovery and the filament runout sensor at least once before you send off a huge print. This way there will hopefully be no surprises as you've confirmed that everything is working the way it should be. The last thing to consider is space, and this might sound obvious but I can tell you right now that looking at the specs or the machine footprint on the products page and then having it show up and Realizing what that meant are two very different things. With i3 style printers, you also have to consider that it's not just the footprint of the machine, but you have to make sure you have enough space on the front of the printer and the back of the printer for the bed, which is often, more often than not, going to go beyond the frame of the printer. That might be an insignificant amount on small printers, but you start chucking around 16 to 18 inch beds, and that can quickly add up to a lot of additional space needed. Before committing to a large form factor i3 style printer, I highly recommend getting the entire footprints of the machine, including the bed extended in both directions, which is not always given on the product page, and taking some measurements. Due to these reasons mentioned, I personally don't like using i3 printers with a bed that's bigger than 300 by 300 millimeters. That has been a pretty good sweet spot for me to print fairly large objects without running into some of the complications that can occur when you decide to scale beyond that. However, I know quite a few people that have been running the large i3 style printers, even the early CR10 S4 and S5, quite successfully for props and cosplay. With all the improvements that have been made and outlined in this video, your experience should be less difficult and it may be the perfect option for your use case as well as your budget. My primary goal is to at least give you some things to consider before you're blinded by the low price point and the very, very large build volume. I hope that this video was helpful and that it gave you some things to consider. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on these large format i3 printers and what your experience has been like if you've used any of them that are larger than a 300 by 300 bed size. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.